Hi there. Um, I just wanted to pop in and say hi and just chat with you about empaths and empaths in relationships because um, right now it's something that's pretty, I guess you could say pretty um, loud or strong in my environment is that a really good friend of mine is going through a breakup which is just really, really breaking her heart. And interestingly though, uh, and I'm going to admit this, uh, is that I feel that her partner, who she's breaking up with, I have felt that he has been taking advantage of her and her good nature because she is definitely an empath. And I've actually felt like when I see that relationship that she, that she deserves much better and he doesn't deserve her and that's what I felt. So there is a part of me, um, in fact, not even a part of me, um, I have felt that she is much better off without him and she is my friend. Um, but for her, it is heartbreaking to go through the breakup. I am speaking this with her permission, just so you know. And um, the breakup is happening and so she's of course feeling really sad and yet I think she will be so much better once she moves forward and the reason is because to me he is a, a, a classic narcissist and so I wanted to talk about this a little bit because uh, I see this happen really often I see it so often that empaths um, fall into what I call a codependent relationship uh, very often with the wrong kind of person. So I wanted to speak about why so that you can see whether you identify with these qualities and the reason I wanted to talk about it and the reason why I asked my friends permission to, to share that is because this is what's really prominent right now in my, in my life, in my environment, um, but also because I don't want to see other empaths get hurt in this way. They don't deserve it. Empaths are really sensitive people who really want to make everybody around them happy. They want to please other people. And so this is why I wanted to, to share my thoughts about this. Um, I understand it because I was there. Many years ago, I have gone through a similar kind of thing. And I speak to my friends and they all say, yeah, we've been there, we've been there. And that's because most of my friends and most of the people attracted to my work are empaths. So. Um, what is it about empaths to do this? So if you are somebody that needs other people around you to feel good and, and you just need them to feel good so that you can feel good, you have to start watching that you have the tendency to do that. So be aware because here's what happens is that so if the people around you don't feel good, very often with empaths, they feel that it's their fault. Do you relate to that? You who's listening to me right now, do you feel that when the people around you are not feeling good, it, you know, and this could be something that started from when you were a child, where you felt it was your fault, your parents weren't happy, um, or for whatever reason, but once you have that feeling that uh, that, oh, um, it's my job to make them happy. And then, so, so that's the other thing. Empaths are rescuers. So when you have that where you need to rescue people who are feeling down or low or depressed or in trouble or struggling or in debt or whatever it is, um, where you feel you need to rescue people. And then on top of that, when you find that no matter how much you do, that they're not coming out of it, you feel it's your fault and then you take it on. Do you have the tendency to do that? You feel it's your fault and you can't stop until you can get them to a place of being happy. But what if they never get to that place? Do you then keep serving them? And then, and then, then the other thing is, the other trait to look for is that are you addict, are you um, averse to disappointing people. In other words, if someone is disappointed in you, do you really take it to heart and then go out of your way to win their approval? Because if you are afraid of disappointing people, 
what ends up happening is that you will allow yourself to be controlled by them in that every time they're disappointed in you, you will change your behavior so as not to disappoint them. It doesn't matter whether it's what you want to do or you don't want to do, but because it's so important to you to not disappoint them, you will behave in ways to make sure that you're always getting their approval. And here's what happens also. Um, if you're not with somebody who values you, who treasures you for the person you are, if you're not with someone who sees you for who you are, and, but you're with somebody who only serves themselves, what's going to happen is that you are going to look for their approval and you're not going to want to disappoint them. And so they will soon realize that all they have to do is be disappointed in you and you will immediately contort yourself like a pretzel and go out of your way to do everything to please them. Does that make sense? Um, so, so I want you to be aware that beautiful, wonderful people like yourself, empaths, who are so giving and giving and giving, you can be a magnet for narcissists for people who are only self-serving. And, and what happens is when they identify, so, so this is kind of how it works. An empath, and this is how empaths get into codependent relationships. An empath likes to give and give and give of themselves. It's all about how can I serve other people? How can I please other people? And they get joy from giving. But it doesn't mean they don't have needs of their own. Of course you have needs of your own. But you have this beautiful heart, this generosity of spirit and energy where you get joy also from just from giving. A narcissist is the opposite. A narcissist is, it's all about me. It's all about me. It's what can I get out of this? How can I utilize this to serve me? And it's not their fault fault that they're like that, but it's not up to you to fix that. So I say it's not their fault because a narcissist is not that way because they love themselves too much. It's because they don't love themselves. It's because they grew up in an environment where nobody showed them love and so they feel that they need to grab what they can and they only latch on to people who will, who will give to them and who have endless supplies and pools to give them. And so it's coming from a place of lack. But the point is that, and I know that many of you empaths are like, oh, but if it's not their fault, I should be helping them. This is a typical thing that happens and empaths often do this. And so they get involved in this relationship and when somebody comes in and says, hey, uh, Mr. or Mrs. Empath, or Ms. Ms. or Mr. Empath, um, don't you see that your partner, your narcissistic partner, doesn't really care about your feelings and it's all about them? The empath then defends their partner and they go, no, wait, uh, no, you can't say that about them. It's not their fault. They're a soul. I still love them because they're a soul. And... Um, they were abused as a child and blah, blah, blah. So the thing is, that's all very gracious and amazing for you to do that, but it's not your job to fix them. Um, so what ends up happening is that you become depleted because when you need something, this is the key thing that happens that I see happening to my empath friends who fall in love with narcissistic partners. The key thing that happens is when the empath person is going through a tough time, a really tough time. When the empath then needs help, whatever the help is, they might be sick, they might be worried about something, they might be, um, <clears throat> excuse me, they might be questioning their narcissistic partner, like, hey, you know, you said you would do this, but you're not gonna do this. What then happens is the narcissistic partner usually either lashes out or finds a way out of the relationship or starts distancing themselves. So in other words, the minute you need them, they're not there for you. They're not there for you. And that's the key. So I often ask my close friends who are in a relationship 
that I suspect is completely imbalanced, I will usually say something like, because when they're saying like, oh my God, I'm so worried, I did this, do you think he hates me, or is he gonna call me, or am I, whatever, la la la, you know, am I, uh, am I gonna see him again, la, la, la. I always ask them, I say, do you think he feels that way about you? And it's surprising how many times when they stop to think and they go, oh, I doubt it. And I say, well, you know, then you shouldn't be in a relationship where the partner doesn't value you and see you. And this is what I want to tell you, all my beautiful empath friends. What I want you to do is I want you to work on yourselves and see yourselves. Maybe you don't even need to work on yourselves. See yourself as this beautiful, beautiful, powerful empath person who deserves to be loved. You deserve to be cherished. You deserve to be seen. You deserve to be seen and heard and valued. And you need to value yourself and know that that is the only kind of relationship you should be in, you know, when it's a partner relationship. That is what I would want every one of you to know. Don't get into a relationship. Don't move in with someone and get into an actual couple relationship unless you truly value and honor each other. Truly, I cannot say this strong enough. And if you don't feel it reciprocated, start thinking about how you're going to start removing yourself from the relationship um, and, and be, you know, start to look for the traits. And so that's really what I wanted to share with you today. And if I, if there are any questions or anything there, I would love to um, answer them. And, and uh, yeah, go ahead. There was a super interesting question. Um, I want to say it was Liana, Lena, um, but do you think that empaths and narcissists come from the same root cause? Like That's a, that is a that is a great question, and it is highly possible. It is highly possible because um, because so some empaths have this tendency more than others because empaths are very very susceptible to what I uh, call depend. Uh, um, developing codependent tendencies. So the empaths who have codependent tendencies, um, it's very, very, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, it is, uh, I don't like to use the word toxic, so forgive me, but that's what I'm going to use here. Codependent tendencies, uh, an empath's codependent tendencies are as toxic as, a nar as narcissistic tendencies are. And they go hand in hand. They make, them, they attract each other. And yes, they could very possibly come from the same feeling of a lack of, um, uh, lack of love and a fear. So what is a codependent tendencies? Uh, and many empaths, even if you're not a full on codependent person, you may have tendrils of it. Um, when you're codependent, what it means is that you, you cannot separate your own emotions from your partner's emotions. You cannot separate your needs from your partner's needs. You need your partner's needs to be met before you are happy. That is a codependent tendency. Sometimes your partner may be a fellow empath and your struggle won't be as bad. But somebody with, who is an empath with codependent tendencies also has a strong possibility of attracting a narcissistic partner. And that's when um, you can really start to really lose yourself and completely start to drain and almost, I would say, die a slow and painful death. I, 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 I'm sorry I said that, but, uh, and uh, just real quick, I want to say that, yes, they are a soul in the eyes of God, in the eyes of the universe. They have a role to play here. They're beautiful people. But remember, the way to help people is by first helping yourself and expanding your energy so that you don't get drawn and sucked into the, um, 
I guess, the problems and the issues of the people that need rescuing. You have to be in a place where you can help them. The best thing you can do for a narcissistic partner is to encourage them to seek help from a professional. Also, the best thing you can do for a friend who has codependent tendencies is to encourage them to seek help from someone who can help them or, or lend them a book or show them a video or something that can help them with their codependent tendrils. Sorry, really interesting question. Yes. Do you think we can use the law of attraction or develop a higher vibration to change the person? Is that possible? Or is that their own responsibility? Hmm. That is their own responsibility. So I love that question. Here's what you do. The law of attraction um, and the way I see it, if I love myself, I will attract that which meets me where I'm. So even if I don't love myself, if I don't love myself, I will attract people that see me where I'm at. The more, the higher my energy, the more self-love, self-worth, self-value I have, the more I will attract that which meets it. So all you have to worry about is to work on yourself and increase your own energy and love yourself and know you are worthy and deserving. And if that partner cannot meet you there, they will drop away and find somebody who does meet them where they're at. But it's not up to you to change them and it's not up to you to work to increase your energy for the purpose of energizing them. That's not on you. That is on them and that is between them and God or the universal energy, their own connection. Your only responsibility is your connection. Expand your connection so you're in the space of higher energy and self-love and self-worth. And then people who, who um, want to be around you have to meet you, come into your space and meet you where you're at. And if they're not there, they will kind of be not attracted. They will be repelled away. If that person is not willing to step up, They'll kind of say, oh, you've changed. You're not the same person you used to be. Um, and then in, in that moment, you have two choices. Either, and usually when they say that, it means that you're not being a doormat anymore. It means that I can't use you in the way that I used to. When they say that, oh, you're not the same person. It means that, oh, you used to serve me and now you don't. Um, I could walk all over you and now I can't. You used to only care about me, but now you started to care about yourself. That's when they'll say, oh, you've changed. So now you have two choices. Either you say, yes, I have, and I'm loving myself more for it, and I feel better. Or you can panic and say, oh, my God, I'm going to lose them and go back to being the doormat. So those are the two choices you have. And so people, a lot of times, empaths with strong codependent tendencies, tend to go with that second choice. It's like, oh, I don't want to lose them. And they go back to being that doormat and they go through this pattern. They're aware of what they're doing. So they work on themselves, they get big and then their partner notices it and then they get afraid. Oh my God, I'm going to lose them because I'm outgrowing them. And they bring themselves back down again. So my suggestion is to be aware that you may even have that pattern that you're only expanding your energy because you want to rescue them because you're thinking, oh, if I uplift my energy, it'll uplift them as well. But don't think like that. Just think in terms of, I just need to uplift my energy for me. That's all. <laughs> and then do you think that two codependents have a, or can cohabit or can have a, make a relationship work? If they both work on it and if they're both aware that they are codependents, um, I think they absolutely can. If they're aware of it, if they're honest and open in their communication, if they uh, start to become aware of their patterns and tendencies, and they're both willing to go for help together so that they can grow together because they love each other and they're committed to each other, then yes. And so very often I have people say to me that I'm in a relationship with a narc, but please don't say that that I just have to walk away or leave them or whatever because I can't, it's really hard. So my question to them is that, does that person feel the same way about you? Are they willing to work as hard on the relationship as you are? 
Are you two able to at least communicate with each other so they can identify their traits, you can identify yours and work together and communicate together um, to, to get over it and, be, uh, and, and to heal it and, and manage the relationship and to be able to be honest with each other. Are you able to do that? And if you say to me, oh, no, no, they're not willing to admit to theirs and they're, they're like, they think they're perfect, they think it's all me and blah, blah, blah then the answer is no, that's never going to be a healthy relationship. And if you want to hold on to that relationship, absolutely you can, as long as you continue to serve that person's needs and be a doormat for as long as you want to, they're not going to go anywhere. So anyway, I wanted to just share that with you only because it has been something that has been on my mind for quite a while. I watch people struggle and I thought, I've got to say something about this because I watch people struggle. I'm watching my own friend go through this and I'm like, people need to know, empaths need to know that, you know, you got to have high self-worth. So I had to speak it. Now, one of the things, um, completely different topic, whew, uh, a lot of people ask me is, because I talk about music, one of the things that is able to help me to change my state of being and my state of mind is music. I love music. So um, I wanted to share with you uh, my, uh, my, a playlist of my songs. So I, I, I created an Apple playlist, which is of like all my favorite type of music. A lot of it is spiritual music. A lot of it I use in my workshops and so on. And I tried to share it publicly and it didn't work at first. And then wonderful Abby, who, you, whose voice you hear behind the scenes, she came over and she took care of it for me. She called Apple and blah, blah. And it took two hours, two hours. And finally, I was able to share my playlists publicly. And so if you go, if you search, um, I guess you search in Apple Music at Anita Morjani, you will find the playlists of some of my favorite tunes. And in my playlist, I've also included some of my friends who are musicians like Paul Luftenegger, Barry Goldstein, um, and of course many others. There's, I think, uh, Deva Pramal and Mitan and Snatham Kaur. And, yeah, so tons of people like that who I absolutely love. And um, before I go, I just wanted to say that uh, I have written a little bit about, uh, about empaths and relationships in my book, Sensitive is the New Strong. Um, so if, if you get a chance, please read that. And the other thing is I'm talking a lot more about empaths and where they struggle and their patterns in my workshops, in my sanctuary. I'm so excited that in-person workshops are starting again. Uh, my first one will be a retreat in Sedona at the end of this year. And uh, I'll post information about that. So thank you so much for tuning in and I will connect with you next week. Have a great week. Bye.